Chuck and I teach a, uh, an intro class together, so we alternate back and forth. Sometimes he's teaching the lecture, I do the lab, mm -hmm. and then vice versa. Uh, so that class is sort of a, um, called Life at the Extremes. It's sort of a, it's one of our, our intro courses in a little bit about um, sort of form function and physiology. And so we both sort of have, had been teaching that class and we actually, actually it was a lab it was. that we Combined. did together mm -hmm. in which, uh, and it, I think it was the first, when was the first semester that I was teaching? It was, and you asked if we could hollow out a cadaveric rat and get a pressure transducer in there. And yeah. So actually one of the students, uh, Keith Kleiman, Keith Kleiman uh, was part of that project and we took an IV bag, a 250cc IV bag and a 300 gram rat, dethought it, uh, took out the thor thoracal abdominal components, so heart, lungs, all that, took it and then replaced it with an IV bag and sutured it close so it had the same essentially volume and mass, heated it up so it was uh, right about body temperature and then Scott dangles it in front of the uh, the snake so we could demonstrate to our students you know the, the mechanism of predation it was in the digestive segment I think we were yeah. doing well and it was actually skeletal muscle I right think, right that's so right. It was the performance of skeletal muscle and in sort of our traditional labs there right. is a, a grip strength sort of um, um, component where we hook and EMG. Mm -hmm. In an EMG, yeah, so you hook up some electrodes and you're looking at the performance of the wow. forearm muscle. Mm -hmm. And Inflection. so I said, you know, we've got all these snakes, you know, maybe we could do a test. And I, and I knew people that had done some stuff with constriction before, but it hadn't been done in, in, in this particular way. So we did that in, in, in a laboratory. And, you know, I'll never forget being in the lab. So we took, cool. it, took a small group of students, the first ones that came down, we kind of broke the class up. Groups and, of four. And they came down into the, the snake room. And there we were, we had the whole rat, you know, a dead rat, you know, um, all hooked up, gave it to a snake. It bit it and, and wrapped around it, constricted it. And we were just basically just measuring constriction pressure at that time, but we saw it. It was phenomenal. And we were just, we were blown away. That 150, was, 200 millimeters of mercury pressure. And so, Humans, uh, blood pressure about 120 millimeters of mercury, right as the heart is ejecting blood, uh, to the low point uh, before the heart contracts again, around 80 millimeters. Well, we demonstrated in this uh, this laboratory that these creatures were generating pressures twice the maximal pressures generated by mammalian hearts. So the wheels start turning. That was pretty impressive. And again, you know, here you've got this IV bag in lieu of an animal. So we decided that, wow, there's something here. And actually Keith took off with it initially. Yeah, yeah, and we started measuring the snakes in the lab. So basically we did this, this laboratory in our intro lab, but then we, that semester, we continued it into the research lab. And so we were working together with students and actually um, Allison, Allison Hall was, was, was part of it. She was a sophomore, sophomore yeah. at the time. And uh, we started to do some of this this work in the lab where, where the snakes were constricting around it but it's a great collaboration because chuck comes from the standpoint physiology. of you know uh, sort of clinical human physiology cardiovascular yeah specifically cardiovascular physiology and i'm sort of the more animal ecologist and uh you know in, into the herpetology and snakes and so Although we both sort of have background yep. in, you know, whole organism. Comparative physiology. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we, we have these, you know, two different disciplines that sort of come together. And, and I think it, yeah. It's just been exciting. Uh, so we each bring different things to the table, but at the same time, we speak the same language. And I think that is just, there's always really cool questions that can pop out of these observations. And you're looking at one of them right here. It's, it's uh, resulted in three honors theses. Uh, actually, if we include John, there's a fourth. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just been delightful how um, we're given the opportunity at a place like this to blend ideas to say, what if? Uh, it's, it's pure science. It's, we are so fortunate to, to work 
uh, a, we get along very well and, and we have access to great students and we have facilities that are unrivaled. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. And so with, with Allison's work, uh, we scaled down that 250 cc IV bag down to an endotracheal tube uh, which is used to control an airway uh, in emergent and, uh, and the anesthesia settings. So it's this little ball that uh, Allison and um, uh, Amanda and, uh, and Katie actually uh -huh. um, worked to attach to a ventilator and that ventilator would push and then pull fluid, saline, in and out of this endotracheal tube which is just about the identical volume of a rat heart. So that was the first paper. Yeah, they, I mean, they basically put a balloon inside a rat and filled it with fluid so that, you know, that rat was dead. So that when we gave it to the snake, as the snake constricted around that rat, it was gonna push that fluid out right. and be sensed by a pressure transducer. Um, but really, the students right. came up with that completely on their own. I mean, we gave them Material some of the equipment and, and the materials. Ideas. But really, part of the, I think, the, the thing that Chuck and I always try to do is get them some independence. Absolutely. So you give them, give them some of the materials, give them some ideas, and allow them to sort of struggle. do the, yeah, the trial and error. It's important they struggle and they rise to the challenge, which yeah. is pretty cool. I mean, that's... That's what a PhD thesis advisor looks for in a, in a successful candidate, is someone who is able to take these pieces and assemble them into a view. Yeah. And that's what these students are doing, and we're so very fortunate to have worked with them. Yeah, while we, when we collaborate together with the students, you know, when, when we have a student in the room and we're giving them instruction on, on, on something, or, you know about something to do or whatever i'm i'm coming from it from a, a different background mm -hmm. and and chuck will be you know he, he'll be really interested because i'll be telling him something that he didn't know about maybe something specific about the snake biology and then if, then he'll turn around and tell us something about the physiology of the cardiovascular system mm -hmm. and so we kind of go back and forth and, and, and respiratory and it, yeah. it's it's uh it's just fantastic um, and again, it's what we all dream about in graduate school, this opportunity to work with colleagues who are similarly interested and, uh, and open. Um, and so we get to advance knowledge incrementally, and this is, a, is just a great, uh, great experience for the students and, and both Scott and I. Um, and again, that, that manuscript went off um, and uh, basically revealed that, that snakes were able to determine when the prey, uh, prey's heart stopped beating, and they would then unhitch uh, and begin a swallow of the prey item. And that was uh, the first paper. And that led, as, as Scott has explained earlier, um, to this work with proximate cause of death. Uh, I have had more fun uh, working on this project uh, than I've had in any collaboration I've done. It's just been uh, remarkable and I look forward to uh, a lot more. Um, all kinds of really neat ideas. This is a fertile ground for this kind of stuff and it's, it's just been magnificent. So. It's because I'm such a great guy. And it's his beard. <laughs> it, his power is derived from the beard. Yeah, that's that's the source of his power. <laughs> he cut it. We're back to regular. But you know, I we I don't know if we said this yet, but um, the we we cannot underscore enough the facilities that we have here. Remarkable, right? So yeah. the uh, the surgical suite downstairs. We have surgical pre-operated pre-op yep. post-op rooms downstairs. That when you know when like my my colleague the veterinarian comes in, he's, he's just blown away at yeah. the, the kinds of things that we have available to us and therefore our students. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to have students inside a, uh, a surgical on. room uh, operating on animals, you know, involved directly in that, that work mm -hmm. is, is an amazing opportunity. It's for invaluable students. for them. And it's in, it, it is a remarkable experience. Uh, again, uh, I've worked in some operating rooms that were far less uh, well put together. And we have facilities here that rival or exceed any place I've been.